Today we're going to look at some solutions for where you have meter tails that are more than three meters long and to do that we're going to use these isolators from Luden Palazzoli. Gary's not here so I need to do a witty comment over the intro. Well, was Joe's comment witty enough? Drop a comment below. Um, well, Gary's away, he's also left his pouch and that was Joe. Yes, yes that's a bit uh, of a mistake unfortunately because if you zoom in very closely, we love this pouch from WeHar, but if you zoom in very closely there you'll see we're missing the slotted posi number two, which is a pretty useful uh, bit there. So He's not going to be happy when he returns. No, we'll try and find that before he gets back. Yeah, but you're here because we obviously made a video recently looking at the issues of when meter tails are more than three metres long and what do you have to do in those scenarios? Yeah, absolutely. That was a bit of a contentious issue. Uh, are we allowed uh, meter tails or consumer unit tails to be more than three metres? The answer is no, <laughs> and we explained why the answer is no, and we also explained that actually we need to not get hung up on that three metres figure either, because some DNOs uh, state that really you're not allowed more than two metres. Yeah, you're right, and we found that when we were looking at the issue of uh, putting switch fuse isolators, well, mainly related to EV installations within the meter box. We're not going to debate that here today. There is a separate video where that is still raging on. Yeah. But interestingly, one of those DNOs, specifically in their instructions, although they weren't uh, open to having EV equipment in there, did suggest that you could put an isolator uh, in the meter box. So yeah, just check out that video. I think we're probably going to have to do a follow-up on yeah. that because there's been a lot of comments on it. Um, so I guess, Joe, the first thing to look at is probably that isolator that possibly could go in the meter box. So We're not just... nailing our colours to any mast at the minute, are we? We're... No, we'll just have a little, <laughs> little closer look at that one. So this is this one here. So this is, uh, what's this product? This is the MSF from Luden uh, and it's a main switch and it's also got inside here a uh, fuse as well. So I've switched it off, it's simulated anyway. And there you can see that fuse holder slides out nice and easily. And the fuse that comes in there is an 80 amp as standard. Okay, so that's, yeah, it's rated at 80 amps. Just there switch it on there, guys. There we go. Yeah, it's a good right positive position. switch action. Yeah, we like that. Well, let's have a look at under the cover. Yeah, so I'll undo these screws and take the front off here, because there's a couple of things just to take note of as we uh, dive into this. Okay, I notice you're ignoring the instructions there. It says switch off before removing cover. Yeah, I think it's fair to say if you uh, know me at all, you'll know that I'm a stickler for the rules, so I'm being properly rebellious here in trying to, oh, look at that it actually won't come off, uh, which is really clever. So this bit of molding around the main switch there means you have to put it in the off position in order to remove that lid there. Okay, that's clever. Uh, so we've got our incoming terminals there. So I notice they're shrouded. Absolutely. So here we've got a, a sort of a tails to tails solution uh, and the incoming tails here are likely to be permanently live all the time. So they're just in place there to make sure that you can't accidentally touch those terminals on the occasions when you do need to remove the lid. Okay, quite generous terms. So you've got 25 mm. millimeters coming in and out, but I notice the uh, CPC is flowing through there as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that's not switched. Absolutely not, no. <laughs> we know there's very strict rules about uh, switching protective conductors. So this is a double pole switch uh, and the live conductor there, the line conductor, I should say, sorry, uh, passes through the fuse holder. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, people using, uh, um, yeah, meter tails, in and out, mm. uh, you've got another another piece of kit there. Yeah, absolutely. So you may be in a situation where you, you're not really keen on running tails, maybe if you're going a little bit more of a distance and perhaps in that situation, we might run a bit of, I'm gonna get this wrong now, twin and CPC. Twin and earth for most people. Twin and, earth. Twin and skin for the cool kids, yeah. so, so I'm told. Uh, anyway, you might wanna run a piece of that cable from here to the position of the consumer unit. And of course, what you can't do is have the sheath ending outside the unit and then the conductor's just been split apart into the terminal. So uh, Luden provide you with this, which they refer to as a cable duct, which is super helpful. So the idea here is that in the back of here, you can see there that there's a little bit that you can cut away. We'll just get a bit of light in there, you can see that. And on the back as well, there's a knockout there that you can use to bring that cable in and then split it into the terminals. Yeah, so that's a good solution. I think they also say you can buy an additional one as well. It comes yeah. with one in the box. Uh, which is yeah good for those solutions. But then, obviously, I'm thinking if you're lengthening those tails, uh, what other precautions do we possibly need to think about? Yeah, well, obviously, if you're putting in tails that are more than two or three meters long, they're probably going to be rooted through a property, which means you may end up having to bury them in a wall. So then, if you're less than 50 mil deep, you've got a problem, no RCD protection, and if uh, the, the solutions are to put it in some kind of uh, earthed 
as metallic containment like steel trunking or steel conduit again a bit of a bit of a, a pain that or uh, as i believe we've uh, we've read an article that suggests from one of our uh, sort of organizations within the industry uh, that you put a bit of armor plating in the wall underneath <laughs> yeah. the plasterboard yeah a substantial bit of metal i think they described it as yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll leave a link to that article uh, below possibly uh, Drop your comments in how you deal with that situation when it comes to meter tails uh, or uh, using possibly yeah, twin and earth for that. But obviously a lot of uh, particularly flats, things like that, where you're going to have uh, quite a distance between the metering position and the consumer unit. What, uh, what's, the, what's the solution that a lot of people are using? Well, of course, we see in a lot of places the answer is to use a bit of armoured cable, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, that can potentially be buried in the wall uh, and that would be acceptable if that uh, armoring is correctly earthed uh, or it could be run on the surface in areas where there's likely to be uh, the chance of mechanical damage but what we've then got is this other solution from Luden which is this consumer unit containing a switch fuse inside there. Okay so what we've got there let's just have a look okay so yeah so that looks like the regular uh, switch we're used to seeing in Luden consumer units. Yeah absolutely and you can see there that it also feeds into the bottom of this fuse holder here. Now, you'll notice at the minute that's empty, but what's fantastic, and I didn't realize this until we started making this video, I think this is a great thing that Luden do. They give you the three most common size fuses that you're likely to be putting into that switch fuse there. You've got your 63 amp, your 80 amp, and your 100 amp, and you select which one you want to pop in. Yeah, well, go on, pop one in, Joe. We'll Pick go with the 80 so it matches, yeah, that's nice. That keeps me happy, and look at that. Okay. Now, I quite like about this, it's a sort of clamshell design, isn't it? So when you yeah. remove the cover, you haven't got sides to the unit. Yeah, which again is actually really helpful in terms of just getting access inside here to the terminals and to bend your cables in. You know, it's quite a 25mm uh, cable is a, a beast that requires a little bit of wrestling, isn't it? And it's quite good as well because it means if you're using, as we are, an earthing nut here, you can actually get into the terminals from the sides as well, which opens up a few more options. Okay, and we've got a bonding lead there as well. Does that go onto the front cover? Yep, and again, that's quite an important thing in the instructions. It specifically states that must be in place. So obviously uh, on the underside of the lid here, you can see that there is a, a little stud just there uh, that that connects onto. And again, yeah, in the instructions, it tells us very clearly that that must be in place. So you can't rely on the connection between uh, the screws that go into the nuts there in the lid. Okay, so I'm looking at this, it looks like quite a compact unit. Mm. You've brought the, uh, the tails in at the bottom yep. and the outgoing cable at the top. What if I wanted to change that round? I'm gonna, you know, I think I'd probably struggle to get the cables down and bent round into the terminals. Can I, yes. can I change the direction? Yeah, absolutely. So again, if you wanna bring the tails in the top here uh, and take your uh, submain cable out of the bottom, this cable here, it actually shows again in the instructions that you can change that into the bottom terminal, which means that then you can bring your incoming cable into the top, which is just such a, a neat little solution, isn't it? Really clever. Yeah, and that's a, yeah, in case you're wondering there, that is quite a flexible cable. Yeah. It's a class five. So yeah, that's going to be pretty easy to position that. Yeah. So. That's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a neat solution. Yeah. Obviously we see, uh, if we look around on uh, Instagram and things like that, a lot of people manage to get this all the way into the meter box. Um, so let us know your solution if you're managing to uh, squeeze this into the meter box mm -hmm. uh, or you've uh, adopted uh, another solution. And we do see various ones out there, but it'd be interesting to get your comments on that. But I think, yeah, this is the, uh, the solution that people are using. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's fantastic. It's got, it's maybe the electrician in mind, you know, a couple of other just what might seem like small features, but are actually super helpful. So you've got uh, in the uh, earthing terminal there, obviously if you're using one of the cores of the armor in there, as uh, sorry, one of the cores of the armored as your uh, earthing conductor, uh, that's gonna be quite a substantial size cable and the terminals in there are absolutely massive. They are uh, more than capable of swallowing up one of those 25 mil uh, square conductors there, which is brilliant. And, and we spotted this label, which was a bit of a, bit of a first for us here, Gordon, as well. Yes, so yeah, the, the all important torque settings. Yeah, attention, you must tighten things to the correct tightness, especially uh, when you're dealing with a pretty high current uh, switch gear like this. And it's, uh, yeah, be, uh, yeah, you, that's a check out our videos we've made on using torque screwdrivers uh, with consumer units. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, contentious issue, but. Uh, as ever, we're always keen um, to understand your thoughts about these solutions. What are you doing when you've got uh, tails more than two or three meters long, depending on which DNO you're dealing with? Um, where do you position the switch fuse? 
and yeah, are you using the metal version or the plastic version? So please put your comments below and uh, we'll look forward to Joe getting back to as many as he can.